Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you can reduce the file size of a PowerPoint presentation. Now, why would you need to reduce the file size of a PowerPoint presentation? Well, maybe you try to open your PowerPoint and it just takes a really long time because it's just a massive file. Or maybe you're trying to email someone a PowerPoint presentation. Hold up, first off, you should probably never email people a PowerPoint presentation. Instead, put the presentation in the cloud on say OneDrive or Google Drive and then share a link. But if you absolutely have to send an email to someone with a PowerPoint presentation, oftentimes if the file is too big, you won't be able to email it. So today I'm gonna to show you how you could get that file size down so it's easier to work with presentations, it's easier to share it with others via email, and it's actually pretty easy to do. Uh, so why don't we jump on the PC and I'll show you step by step how you can get your PowerPoint file sizes down. Here I am on my PC and I have a PowerPoint presentation. It's called Big Presentation. And when a PowerPoint presentation has a name like that, you know it's gonna be really big. So let me right click on it and let's see how big this actually is. I'm gonna go down to Properties and here I can see the PowerPoint presentation properties. We see that it's about 67.4 megabytes. Now that's a fairly large file. It's probably too big to email that to someone and it might take a little bit of time if I try to open this. Ideally, we can get this file size down. To get this file size down, why don't we open up Microsoft PowerPoint and first off see what's even in this file and why it's taking up so much space. Here I am in Microsoft PowerPoint and immediately one thing you'll probably see is there are a lot of photos in this PowerPoint. I even have a video in this PowerPoint and all of those are going to contribute to taking up more space. Now, when I worked at Microsoft as a program manager, many of the presentations we did were also rich in photos and different multimedia and so these are the types of things that contribute to a PowerPoint taking up a lot of space. Now, you don't have to remove photos or remove videos. Instead, I wanna show you a way that you could continue to use them, but it'll take up less space. Before we jump into that though, I wanna orient you to the deck, and also I need to make a few tweaks to my deck before we go through and optimize it. And first off, here's a photo of my son. You might be surprised that he is my son. He has completely different hair color than I do, but I promise you this is my son. I figured I should include a photo of him in the deck because this will help generate more likes than I would be able to generate just on my own. So here with this photo of my son, one tweak that I wanna do, I'm gonna click on the photo, go up to this bar up on top in the ribbon and I'm gonna click on picture format. You could see currently that the photo is larger than the slide. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crop this photo down so it fits the slide. Now, as I crop the photo, one thing I wanna call out, if I click on the photo again, I've already cropped it. If I go back up to crop, you'll see that all these details associated with the photo, the base, the top, those are still there, and all of those will contribute to the size that this photo takes as part of the presentation. So keep that in mind, and we'll get back to how to handle this. Now, secondly, here's another photo of my son. Uh, he's hanging out on the beach. You know, now I'm really trying to milk these likes by showing another picture of my son, but in this case, I wanna make a quick tweak to this photo, so I'm gonna click on the photo. I'm gonna go up to picture format, and let me change it to, maybe I'll go with black and white. Nothing says it's a quality photo, is turning it into black and white. Now, one thing that's interesting, if I go to undo, you'll notice that it's color again. If I go to redo, you'll see that it's black and white. All of these edits and tweaks that I make to photos get saved as part of the PowerPoint file. So once again, another thing that contributes to photos taking up space and edits taking up space. Now in the third photo, I'm not gonna make any edits to this. I just wanna try to get some th sympathy from people, but when you work on a lot of YouTube videos, you're tired, and so my son entertained me and he slept with me uh, for a nap. In the fourth picture, this is my son going down a slide all by himself. Actually, just kidding, before you call me an irresponsible parent, if we zoom in here, you'll see that my wife is in back of him and she's holding on to him very tightly. But it is fun when you send a photo like this to family and you tell them that your two-year-old went down a slide all on his own and then you get all the reactions. In the next picture, just threw this in for the fun of it, this is the studio that all these photos get made in. I recently added some acoustic panels, so hopefully you could hear that there's no longer an echo in the audio. And then in the very last slide, this is one of the big culprits of taking up a lot of space in this presentation. It's a video file. 
If you're curious, this is Cary Park in Seattle. This is by far one of the best places to see the city of Seattle skyline. And here you see a time lapse where it gets darker and darker. Yes, this photo and this video took a long time to film and I probably wouldn't do it again, but it actually turned out pretty nicely. That's a quick overview of all of the different content within this PowerPoint presentation. And if you had to guess where most of the space is coming from, you're probably right, it's the video. And this video file, all I did is I took a video file and I inserted it into my presentation. And what happens is when you insert a video into your presentation, it's now part of the presentation, it's embedded. So the entire video file, contributes the size of that video file, all contributes to the size of my presentation. So how would you insert it in a different way? Well, why don't we go up to file up here on insert on the ribbon, and I'm gonna go over to insert video, and this video file is on my PC, so I'm gonna click on video on my PC. Here in the file picker, I see that Cary Park time lapse is one of my options, so I see that right here. If I just click on insert, by default, that will embed the video file in the PowerPoint presentation. Instead, what I could do is I could click on this drop down and I could insert a link to the file. So let me insert a link to the file instead, and I'm gonna delete the embedded video in back. And now what I wanna do is let's save the presentation and see how much space we just saved. So I'm gonna go to file, save as, and this is gonna be a big presentation. Maybe I'll just say, I'll say medium presentation since we got rid of the video. And now let's go ahead and save this file. I'm back on my desktop and I now have the new file that I saved. Let's see how big this is. I'm gonna go back to properties and now we see that I got it down from about 70 megabytes all the way to 13.6 megabytes. So we're heading in the right direction. It's getting smaller, but I bet that I could get this even smaller than that. So why don't we jump back to PowerPoint and I'll show you how we could reduce the file sizes even more. Here I am back in PowerPoint and I've returned to the video slide in my presentation. Now, one of the problems with linking to the file is if I share this deck with anyone else, the link to the file will break. The reason why is the file is on my computer and if I send my presentation to someone else, it'll link to a file that's not on their computer. So the best way to insert a file is to go up to insert here on the ribbon, go over to video and ideally if you're going to be sharing your presentation with others you want to put the video file online so i'm going to click on online video and here it asks me to enter the url for the online video now you might be wondering well where do i get the url for the online video let me show an example so here i've opened up a browser window with a video that i did recently on why i left microsoft and so let's say I wanted to put this video into my PowerPoint presentation. Instead of just dropping the video in the presentation, this is a very large file because it's a long video. What I could do is I could click on the share link here and this will give me a share URL. I could click on copy. And then what I'll do is let me go back to PowerPoint and all I would have to do is paste the URL in this field and then that will allow me to insert the video into my slide presentation. Now the good thing is when I link to a video this way, it won't contribute any additional space to my presentation. So if you're just working on a presentation on your own, on your computer and you won't be sharing it with others, you could add a video on your PC and then link to it. And if you're planning on sharing a file with others, I would would recommend taking the video file, uploading it to a service like YouTube, and then linking to the video online. This will get the video file size down, and you've seen how much we reduce the file size by, but let's see if we could get it down even more. Now, I'm gonna go back up to slide number one, and once again, we have a lot of photos in this deck, and they take up a lot of space. So to reduce the file size that a photo takes, let's click on this photo here, and when I click on the photo up on the ribbon, a picture format option appears. Let's click into picture format. Now the option that I want to use is one over here called compress pictures. This will allow us to reduce the size of all of the photos within the presentation. So let's go ahead, let's click on that. Now when I open this, I see a few different options. One of them is apply only to this picture. If I uncheck that, it'll apply it to all of the pictures within my presentation. I think I want to do that because I have a lot of other photos within the this presentation and I could probably compress all of them. 
There's also an option here that says delete cropped areas of photos. Now remember early on when I was showing you all the photos, I cropped this photo behind. And if I delete the cropped areas of the photo, it'll no longer carry those cropped sections with the presentation. That's another way we could save space as well. So I'm gonna leave that checked. Now lastly, down below, there's an option where you could select the resolution of the pictures within your presentation. It gives a little bit of detail on what resolu resolution is appropriate for what use cases. So here, if you're gonna show it, say on a web page or on a projector, the web, 150 uh, pixels per inch, or if you're just gonna email it to someone, you could go with 96 pixels per inch. Uh, so I'm gonna go with email 96, uh, just to see how much I could compress this by, and then I'm gonna click on OK. What it's done now is it's compressed all the photos within the slide presentation. As I go through the photos, you probably don't notice that much of a difference. So they've been compressed, I'm saving a lot of space, but the quality hasn't really degraded that much. Now let's go back and see how much file space we take. So I'm gonna to go to File, Save As, and once again, now I'm gonna go and let's call this a small presentation and see how much space it takes. I've saved the presentation, let's minimize PowerPoint and go back to the desktop to small presentation. I'm gonna click into properties. And now you see that we're all the way down to 3.26 megabytes. So once again, we started at 70 with the big presentation. And then we got all the way down to 13 megabytes with the medium presentation. And here with the small presentation after compressing images, we are all the way down at 3.26 megabytes. Can we do even better? Well, there are a few more efficiency gains that we could get. I'm gonna open up PowerPoint again and we're gonna go to the file menu. Now I'm gonna go all the way down to options and within options, I wanna jump into the advanced category. Within advanced, right in the middle or the bottom of the initial screen, I see some additional options related to image size and quality and one of them says discard editing data. So when I change the photo to black and white, if I discard the editing data, I won't be able to go back and restore the color version. In a sense, when I save the presentation, it's saving both a color copy and a black and white copy, but I could discard that editing data and that'll save a little bit more space. And then here too, I also have the option to set the default resolution that it'll use. So this is one other way I could set the default resolution. If I discard the editing data, that'll save me a little bit more space. It won't be a massive amount, but really I could get it down to about three megabytes total. So now that I've gone through and I've made all these edits and I've reduced the file size quite a bit, I wanna show you the last way you could also save space. If we go up to file and then we go to save as, when you save your PowerPoint presentation, make sure that you save it as a PPTX. You want that X at the end. That's the most modern file format for PowerPoint. There was a previous one with older versions of PowerPoint called PPT. This is not as efficient as a format and your PowerPoint presentation will likely be larger if you use that uh, format. If you have any presentations in PPT, all what you can do you could open them in PowerPoint, save them as PPTX, and you'll probably notice an immediate gain uh, in the amount of space that a file takes up. So you'll have less space used for that file. All right, well, that was a quick tutorial showing you how you can reduce the size of your PowerPoint presentation. If this video helped you reduce the size of your PowerPoint presentation, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you have any other topics that you wanna see me cover in the future, leave a comment down below that's how I build my list of videos to create. It comes from suggestions from viewers like you. All right, well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoy and I hope to see you next time. Bye.